In today's video, we're talking about perspective. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today, we're talking about something very, very simple, but it's something that can make a massive difference to your photographs, and that is perspective distortion. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you might have seen this when you take a picture and sometimes you notice around the edges of the photograph, particularly on the top and the bottom, that you end up with this distortion in a sort of V-shaped or an upside down V-shaped. That is perspective distortion. So how precise do you need to be when leveling the camera to avoid this problem? Well, you don't have to get it exactly right. It is a little bit forgiving, but obviously the closer you get it to being completely level, the better it's going to look. Now, there are some tools to help you do this. So in some cameras, such as the 5D Mark IV, there are some leveling tools in there that will actually pro provide you with a little level in there. So you can actually level it in, in both orientations. You can level it in this way, but you can also level it that way as well. So the idea is to keep moving it until you get the green light. And that's how you know that the camera is level. Now, if your camera doesn't have one of those tools built into it, you can check your tripod. A lot of tripods these days come with a little bubble. And I'll try and see if I can get that to focus on there. Um, but there is a little bubble just there and another one just over here. So you might want to check uh, if your tripod has one of those. Now, if you haven't got either of those, you're just going to have to try and eyeball it as best as you can by looking through the viewfinder or the back screen of your camera to try and tilt the camera up and down until you see those lines straighten up. So all this is great for new photographs because now you know how to avoid uh, perspective distortion. But what happens if you've taken some photograph, let's say a few years ago when you didn't know how to do this and you've got this distortion in those photographs, is there anything that you can do to fix them? And the answer is that you may be in luck. You may be able to fix them. There are some tools in Lightroom as well as in Photoshop that allow us to do some corrections on perspective distortion. So what we're going to do now is we're going to jump into Lightroom and later we're going to jump into Photoshop and I'm going to show you how to try and correct them. Now before we go on if I could just ask you to please like this video by clicking the like button. When you do that it's a confirmation to me that I'm making the kind of videos that you enjoy watching and you find useful and that's how I decide what kind of videos I'm going to make in the future. So please click the like button, I'd really appreciate it. Also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure that you do so. I make videos like this every week to help you with your photography. So if you don't want to miss out on any of them, click the subscribe button, click the notification bell, that way you'll know every time I upload a new video. So let's jump into Lightroom and Photoshop and see how we can fix this uh, perspective distortion. Okay, so here we are inside of Lightroom and I've got a few images in here to try to illustrate to you perspective distortion and why it happens and how to fix it. So hopefully you are able to follow along. So this is a, um, a perfect example of what I'm talking about. In this case, I've got the camera tilted down as you, and as you can see this wall here the top of the wall seems to be leaning to the right. Okay, now that, that shouldn't be happening. It looks amateurish and uh, what it should look like is a little bit more uh, like that where the wall is actually straight, okay? So that's just an illustration of what I'm talking about. Now I've got some images in here that were actually provided to me uh, by a client of mine and uh, to try and see if I can fix this for them because they didn't know how to fix it, right? Now, it's super easy to do this and 99% of the time, Lightroom will automatically do this for you, okay? Now, this one here, it's quite subtle. As you can see that the, that line there, it's not perfectly vertical. Uh, it is leaning a little bit to the right. And how, where we want to be where, when we're fixing this is in the develop module. And then we want to scroll all the way down on the right hand side. We want to scroll down to the transform pane. These are the tools we're going to be using to fix this. And I'm going to concentrate on the auto button. I'm also going to show you how this little tool over here works. And then I'm going to just briefly explain to you uh, how these sliders work. But like I said, 99 times out of 100, automatic is going to work for you, okay? So I haven't done this on these images yet, so I, I'm yet to see what the results are. But uh, I've got this image here. I'm going to click on auto. Okay, as you can see, it's worked fantastic. Uh, this line is now pretty straight, and it's sort of balanced everything else out in the image uh, to look correct. So let me just switch that off again. That's before, and that's after. And... This, this, you can tell that it's, there's something wrong with the image, maybe, and you can't quite tell what it is, but when you do it, when you click on the auto button, it does polish the image quite nicely, and I'd be quite happy to use this on a website uh, or a brochure. I think it's ready to go, so it's worked nicely on this one. Let's have a look at this other image. Now, this one here is a little bit more extreme. Uh, you can see the doorway here to the left. 
uh, where the top of the door is actually missing. That's how much distortion there is in there. We're going to click automatic here. And there it is. And it's actually done a pretty good job considering how badly distorted this image is. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Let's go to the last image that I've got, this one here. Now, the, this one's subtle, but it is um, it is actually quite distorted. You can see that the, there's lines on the right-hand side that are distorted and then the complete opposite on the other side. Uh, so the top of it seems to be sort of in a V-shaped. Now, let's click Auto. And again, it's done a really, really good job. So that's before and that's after. And I think that that is very, very usable. So let me show you a different way to uh, to fix these. Let me reset these. Um, let is uh, reset this one as well. Okay. So the other way, if the automatic doesn't work for you, and there is some other buttons in here that you can try. Okay, level here tries to find um, a horizontal line to try and even everything out with. In this case, you might try to find this line over here below below the mirrors. So if I click on level, again, it does a pretty good job. Uh, between auto and level, there's very little difference, but but it does. there is a little bit of a difference, so it's just up to you which one you prefer. But let's say that none of those work. Uh, another way to do this is by using this little tool here. When you click on this, your pointer will change to this little cross. And what you need to do now is you need to tell uh, Lightroom, uh, some lines that should be vertical. So in this case, this here, this corner here where the shower screen and the mirror meet, this should be straight. So I'm going to click on the top of that. I'm going to click and drag all the way down to the bottom and I'm going to draw this line. Okay, you can, by moving the mouse, you can draw this line. Um, so you're going to stretch this line along that joint there. And then I'm going to get a second one and I'm going to use, I'm going to use this line over here. Okay, so I'm going to do that and that, and then I'm going to let go. And when I do, that is a reference point for Lightroom uh, to tell it that uh, those are the lines that need to be straight. And again, it's done a pretty good job, but um, I don't think it's as good as the auto. Let me have a look. I prefer the auto, so I'm going to keep, I'm going to stay with the auto. Now, another uh, thing that all, you know, if all of this fails and you just can't get it right, um, let me reset this. The other way to do this is by using the actual sliders in here. And this is a 100% a manual process. So these sliders control the axis of your photograph, um, uh, the, the, the different types of axes. So let me explain. When you slide this to the right and left, it's you can get that vertical axis. It's spinning in the middle, okay? Then you've got your horizontal axis for the next one, okay? You've got your rotation, You've got your aspect, okay? Scale, which is zoom in and out. And then you've got your X offset. You're moving it to the left and to the right. And then you've got up and down with this one here. So let's uh, let's just reset this, okay? Let's say that we wanted to do this one manually. I would probably go uh, knowing that this vertical line is not vertical and I want to make it vertical. I would go to the vertical slider then. And then I would... Uh, do it so that it maybe that that looks about right now when i did that you you're going to notice that you've got this white border here that's been introduced and the reason that happens is that you're trying to squash the top part of the photograph to bring it in line uh, only there isn't enough photograph okay so then this white band here is introduced and in order to get rid of that you simply click on the crop tool and you just crop your photo uh, to get rid of that white, okay, and you end up with the image. But again, most of the time you're not going to have to do this. It's just that if you get stuck or Lightroom gets stuck and you can't work it out, then at least you know what the sliders do in order for you to be able to try and correct this manually. But I think for the most part, auto, in fact, I think auto looks a lot better than what I did. Okay, so here we are inside of Photoshop, and I think Photoshop is actually an easy way to do this. Um, so we've got the same photograph here, and in order to fix this, very, very simple, you just, uh, you were going to use a tool called the Free Transform Tool, and you're going to find this tool in the Edit menu, uh, about halfway down, there it is, Free Transform, so we're going to select that. You can also uh, enable that tool by hitting the Command T or Control T on your keyboard, and it's going to bring up these little handles. Now, these little handles are used to resize the image, so you can 
do that. We can move it around and so forth. Um, and it keeps the ratio, so it keeps the perspective. But we're not going to use it like that. We're going to use it a little bit different. Um, if you notice my mouse pointer, when I, when I put it or when I hover over the top of this corner here, you have these two little arrows uh, facing away from each other. If I hold down the command key on my keyboard or the control key if you're using a PC, it's going to then change to this little white um, pointer that's going to allow me to just move that one uh, that one anchor point and not affect the other ones. So if I move now, it'll look a little bit different. So now it's letting me go in and just straighten that up. So I'm just sort of gauging this, um, you know, sort of by eyeball, eyeballing it basically. Um, if I wanted to be very precise, I could set some rules in here, but uh, some rulers in here. But I don't think I need to in this case. So I think I think that's about right, and that looks pretty straight. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that that's all I got to do. So I'm going to click OK here with a little tick box up at the top. And again, just like in Lightroom, you end up with this bit of you know empty space here because you've squashed the picture in. So we're going to use the crop tool, and we're just going to bring that right side in there. And I'll click OK there. And we've got a corrected image. As you can see, the wall is now nice and straight and the floor is now nice and straight. So that's it. And like I said before, it's a tiny little thing and very easy to do, but it makes a massive difference to the quality of your photographs, uh, particularly for real estate or architectural photography. Now, hopefully you were able to follow along, but if you weren't, uh, if you've got any questions or you need me to clarify anything, make sure that you leave them in the comment section below. I'd be happy to get back to you uh, and help you with whatever I can. Lastly, I'm going to remind you about ministryoffoto.com. That's a website that I launched a little while ago. It's got all sorts of stuff in there. It's got links to my videos. Uh, there's blog articles, reviews. Uh, there's even some freebies that you can download. It's completely free, so make sure you go and check it out. That's ministryoffoto.com. So that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful. Again, please don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I want to thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.